Hello everyone and welcome to Around the Globe for Snow Leopard's 24-hour virtual fundraiser. It's been amazing to see all of you interacting so actively in all the sessions. We're so glad that you could be joining us for this event and through this process also help save these amazing cats. Uh, in this session today, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the livestock insurance programs. This is one of our many conservation community-based conservation interventions that uh, aims towards helping peaceful coexistence between snow leopards and people. Uh, before we start our session, there's a quick uh, housekeeping announcement. Please put all your uh, microphones on mute. And if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box and we will come to it at the end of our session. Uh, so today with me, I have Dr. Charudat Mishra, the Executive Director of the Snow Leopard Trust. Charu? Um, yeah, thanks, Ranjini. Hi, everyone. It's uh, such a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for being able to join us uh, today. We highly appreciate your support and looking forward to interacting with you during this session. Thanks, Charu. And I have Mr. Karma Sona. And uh, Mr. Kagma is the field manager of the, uh, of the Nature Conservation Foundation uh, field station in India. And Nature Conservation Foundation is one of our partner organizations. Uh, hi, Karma ji. Welcome. Hey. Yeah. Julie. Julie. Julie to all. <laughs> uh, and my name is uh, Ranjani Murli, and I'm the conservation scientist at the Snow Leopard Trust. So uh, before we start the amazing film that we're going to be watching in this session, uh, Charu, I was just wondering, you know, uh, this film that we're looking at today is going to be looking at the livestock insurance program that's in Ladakh, but we have several of these uh, livestock insurance programs in different of our, uh, in many of our uh, places that we work. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charu, you actually started this about 20, close to 25 years now, actually, right, 25 years ago in a village called Kipwa in Spiti Valley in India. Uh, what motivated you to start this uh, program then? Um, Ranjini, we, the program is about 20 years old in Kipwa. And um, well, what motivated me was that the first time ever that I, I arrived in the village to do my research, I learned of a story that a snow leopard had recently been killed. It had entered the village, entered a corral, and managed to kill a few livestock. And then, uh, but before it could leave, uh, the people had managed to trap him and then kill him right inside the village. And then I, I also heard that uh, for a long time on, uh, on that day, men and women from the village kept lining up, taking turns, to beat the carcass of this long dead animal with sticks and to curse it for having killed their livestock. And it was a, uh, it was a distressing uh, experience for me to hear about this story. It also made me angry. But then uh, I started living with the people as I started you know, living and interacting with them. I actually realized that it isn't easy for people, for communities like the one in Kibber to actually be able to coexist with a predators. Um, in the case of snow leopards, people lose their livestock to them. Um, when, when snow leopards attack, particularly when they do these attacks inside corrals, it creates fear, emotional distress, and of course, significant economic losses. So while we can perhaps never fully understand, you know, what a herder family goes through when they lose their livestock to these predators you know, in terms of you know, their fear, anger, emotions, et cetera. But um, at least we thought that the, uh, a program like the Livestock Insurance Program could, uh, could enable them to, to help each other out uh, in terms of the financial setbacks. So it's a way, it's, it's sort of uh, the way the insurance program is designed. It's a way to distribute that risk and if and when snow leopards or wolves do kill livestock, then at least there is a there is a, a some kind of a support mechanism that is able to assist people financially. Thank you so much for sharing this story with us, Acharu. 
and you know it really brings out these complex relationships between uh, people and carnivores in these areas that we live in and it's never as black and white you know it's always so many sides to a, a coin that we're going to be looking at and this film is actually going to beautifully capture these multiple dimensions to the story that we're going to be seeing uh, the film that we're going to be watching today was shot by Gail Kodratsky who is um, a writer a producer a filmmaker a director and this film has actually been an award winning film so with that we uh, move on to watching the film the indian himalayas 4000 meters above sea level here winds carry more than smoke and dust mantras of compassion and goodwill are blown across these mountains people have managed to eke out a living in this stone wilderness with what little the land provides for the villagers of gya livestock is precious providing many of the basic necessities they need to survive The hardship of life in these mountains is etched across Tashi's face. Like so many in his village, Tashi has been herding goats all of his life, surviving on less than $2 a day. And these goats are his lifeline. Their wool is his sole source of income. Losing just a few animals could be devastating. Every evening, the goats are secured in a pen, Tashi's small shelter, within earshot of his precious animals. And for good reason. They share this unforgiving landscape with a stealthy hunter. Highly camouflaged and highly elusive, snow leopards are seldom seen. Much of their lives are shrouded in mystery. Snow leopards are a really hard species to study. They are so perfectly camouflaged. They occur in really harsh and difficult terrain, extremes of climate, and they are rare. Researchers can't say exactly how many snow leopards remain in the wild, but many believe there are as few as 4000 animals scattered across the mountains of 12 countries. The very real possibility of snow leopard extinction looms. loss of habitat from mining and other human activity has placed increased pressure on the cat and disrupted a delicate balance for generations snow leopards and people have shared these rugged mountains but over the last decades this fragile relationship has been put to the test A growing population of domestic animals combined with a warming climate has led to increased desertification turning fragile grasslands into dust In the precious grazing land that remains domestic herds are squeezing out wild sheep and goats With the snow leopards prey in decline the cat turns its sights to easier game like Tashi's prized goats. When domestic animals are killed by a cat, it's a serious financial setback for the entire community 
and the response is swift. Experts estimate that up to one snow leopard is killed every day, and nearly half of these deaths are a result of retaliatory killing. It's the single greatest threat facing the snow leopard. And it's hard to talk to a person about conservation if they're living below poverty line. And the first step in that situation is to enable that person to have a, a steady livelihood, send his or her kids to school, and if you can help them do that, they will help you with conservation. There was a time when Tashi would have hunted down and killed any cat that threatened his livestock, but not anymore. Today, he has other options. But developing these options didn't come overnight. It took many discussions and sharing of ideas. Before Tashi's village, the Snow Leopard Trust, and Nature Conservation Foundation arrived at ways they can protect their livestock. In 2013, the community and the Snow Leopard Trust established a livestock insurance program managed by the village. As part of this unique program, both the Snow Leopard Trust and villagers like Tashi pay into a fund that gives herders compensation if they lose an animal to a snow leopard attack. Now the community has some security against financial loss, and in return, they've agreed not to retaliate against the cats. Tashi feels the support of his village, and through the program has learned even better herding practices. Implementing a conservation program in a village has two dimensions. The first is the viability of the project, but more important is the acceptability of a project. So it's, it's really about understanding and trust um, between the communities and us, yeah. Recognizing the decline in prey, the villagers also set aside a plot of land exclusively for wild sheep and goats, free from grazing livestock. Over the past five years, the land has made a remarkable recovery. The numbers of blue sheep are on the rise. Numerous plant species have also made a comeback. This reserve has already increased the biodiversity of key mountain species and revitalized the land. The community and the snow leopard are both benefiting from this partnership in conservation. The Snow Leopard Trust works in partnership with communities across the snow leopard's range, including China, Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, India, and Pakistan. These programs, forged by community members, aim to create sustainable conservation projects to ensure the snow leopard, its prey, and the communities who share their home continue to thrive. Projects like the Livestock Insurance Program are unfolding across the mountains of Central Asia and clearly demonstrate that sustainable, community-based conservation is working.
I hope you all enjoyed watching that film. For me, you know, it really brings out these complex relationships that we that Charu had just spoken about before the film started. Uh, Kalmale, now you are in Ladakh, and you know, like the film shows, this was primarily set in Ladakh and very close to Karmaji's village. And uh, Kalmale has been involved in setting up many of these insurance programs in many villages in Ladakh. Karmaji, have you faced any challenges? And what are the different kinds of challenges you faced while uh, you know trying to set up these insurance programs in villages there? Could you tell us about it? Uh, thank you, Ranjini. हम लोगों का ये जो इंश्योरेंस प्रोग्राम है लद्दाख में 2006 से हमने इंट्रोड्यूस किया था तो पहला जो हमने शुरुआत में मेरा अपने नेटिव गांव से शुरू हुआ था जो जो कि पांच साल हमने ऐसे ट्रायल बेस चलाया था उसके बाद हमको बहुत अच्छा कम्युनिटी की तरफ से बहुत अच्छा रिस्पांस मिलने के बाद हमने इसको धीरे-धीरे एक्सपेंड किया फर्दर और पांच गांव में तो जब हम कोई नया चीज लेके गांव में जाते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली चैलेंजेस तो होते हैं लेकिन जहाँ तक मेरा ये दस साल का जो कम्युनिटीज की कंजर्वेशन उसमें इंगेजमेंट में हम काम किया था उसके एक्सपीरियंस के मुताबिक ये लगा कि हम ऐसे कंजर्वेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की तरफ से फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल जब हम कम्युनिटीज के साथ जाते हैं जब जो भी मतलब कम्युनिटी के साथ जाते हैं हम अपने तरफ से जब इंट्रोडक्शन जो उनके साथ जो हम लोग मिलते हैं तो अपने तरफ से बहुत हाई ट्रांसपेरेंसी ट्रूथफुल और ओपन कम्युनिकेशन के साथ उनके साथ जो रिलेशन बिल्डअप करना बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट हम आपने फील किया अगर वो हमेशा उनके साथ रहे तो हमें नहीं लगता है कि ऐसे हर जगह फेस करना पड़े शुरू है थोड़ा सा दिक्कत क्योंकि ये सारा उनके लिए भी है कम्युनिटीज के लिए भी नया चीज था और हमारे लिए भी खासकर मेरे लिए भी एक नया चीज था थोड़ा सा हमको चैलेंजेस फेस करना पड़ा उसके बाद हमने अपना जो एक्सपीरियंस जो हुआ था कम्युनिटी के साथ वो एक्सपीरियंस हमने उसको यूज किया अपने तो धीरे धीरे हम अभी तक पांच छह गाँव में इसको एक्सपेंड करने का मतलब मिला ये हमारा एक कर्मा जी बस they started the we started the livestock insurance program in ladakh for the first time in 2006 and when we first started it was in karma zone village and like he rightly says in his decade of uh, community engagement for conservation and the important lessons that he's learned is that of course you whether it's a livestock insurance program or any other program it's always challenging initially because it's a new thing for us it's a new thing for the community but in his experience what serves us the most is a sort of constant very open and transparent communication with the community in terms of what a program can do what what our agenda is what our work is about and you know the um, those kind of details and he feels that the um, it's really with that kind of open and transparent communication, do we, are we able to build trust between us and the communities? And for a pro, any program like this, it's critical that there is trust amongst community members and between community members and us. So while you know, starting an insurance program definitely is challenging, much like any other uh, conservation program with any community, with open, sustained, and transparent communication, we build relationships, we build truthful relationships, and then it becomes so much easier to implement the programs. Thank you so much, uh, Karma Ji, for that wonderful response. And thank you, uh, Charu, for translating it. And you know, uh, Charu, it appears that working with communities is a lot of hard work, you know, like you have to be in the landscape, you have to build relationships, and it's gonna take time, and it's a long-term effort. Uh, why do you think it's important working with communities for uh, conservation? That's the only way we are going to be able to guarantee a future for snow leopards. And 
because you know these kind of con conservation partnerships like the one that you saw in the film and like the one that karma was talking about you know they they benefit the wildlife they benefit uh, snow leopards and wolves and other species and then they also benefit people and what we have to understand is that snow leopards need really large areas to sustain themselves they have large home ranges and the kind of area snow leopards need compared to that most of our protected areas tend to be very small and they're simply inadequate to be able to help conserve a you know a, a sizable population of snow leopards so the the snow leopards must be conserved on lands that are used by people and therefore uh, it's really critical we don't have a, you know apart from the fact that it's it's uh, it's our ethical obligation and moral obligation to be working with underserved people and seeking their um, cooperation and support in conservation. I think, uh, you know, effective snow leopard ca conservation cannot be done without community partnerships. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Charu. And um, Karmaji, like Charu's been, Charuji's been saying, you know, it's so important that we work with people in these landscapes. And I was wondering if you knew, like, you know, if you could tell us some stories of how these livestock insurance programs have helped people in the communities that you've been working with. You know, if any story comes to mind, uh, could you please share it with us? Uh, conservation is our goal to wildlife. दूसरी तरफ से कम्युनिटीज को कस्टक जो लॉसेस हो रहा है उफ, उनका जो लॉसेस तरह से भरपाई किया जाए मेन हमारा ये दोनों चीज दोनों की तो आ, बहुत सारे स्टोरीज है अभी तक का जो हमने आ, पिछले आ, 10 साल की उसमें के साथ जो एंगेजमेंट रहा उसमें बहुत सारे लोगों ने आ, मिला और ये इस उनके लिए भी अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि ये खुद कम्युनिटी पे चलाते हैं और उनका जो भी वो लोग करके रखते हैं वो इजीली उनको मिल जाते हैं और जैसा मेरा एक स्टोरी तो बहुत है लेकिन 2016 में जैसे हमारा तीसरा गांव जो हेमिया गांव पे उन्होंने सिर्फ याक को ही जो बड़ा लार्ज बॉडी 39 याक को इंश्योर किया हुआ था वो जो जो कि में शुरू किया था तो 16 में जो फर्स्ट जो नोलिपट की वजह से जो डेग्रेडेशन हुआ था जो मतलब किल उनको कंपनसेशन क्लेम करना था तो मुझे फोन आया था उन्होंने हमारा ये जो याक वहां पे किल हुआ है तो मैंने बोला आपको आप अप, अपनी जो कम्युनिटी इंश्योरेंस कम्युनिटी से मिली उनको रिपोर्ट दीजिए और आप सेंड जो ड्यू कंपनसेशन है वो मिल जाएंगे तो ठीक है तो उसके बाद जब एनुअली जब मीटिंग होने के बाद फिर मुझे फोन आया कि हां हमारा उसके बाद हमको 8000 रुपया कंपनसेशन मिला तो फील हो रहा था उसी क्योंकि हर एक एक साल में जो जिस समय उन शुरुआत में जो डेट रखा प्रीमियम बढ़ने का उस समय एक साल में उनको कंपनसेशन मिल मिला तो काफी खुश था इस तरह से हर जगह पे लोगों का बहुत अच्छा पॉजिटिव रिस्पांस कर्मा जी वर सेइंग देयर सो मेनी एग्जांपल्स ऑफ द वे द इंश्योरेंस प्रोग्राम हैज बेनिफिटेड द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ही पर्टिकुलरली रिमेंबर्स अबाउट वन इंस्टेंस वेयर इन 2016 इन फ्रॉम अ विलेज कॉल्ड हेमिया वेयर वी रिसेंटली स्टार्टेड द इंश्योरेंस प्रोग्राम uh, he got a call, Karmaji himself, although he's not from this village, he got a call from, uh, from a person who'd lost a, uh, one of his yaks to a snow leopard. And so Karma, of course, advised him that he should immediately go and report this to their own village insurance committee, and which is what uh, that person did. And in the annual event, this person received compensation of 8,000 rupees at that time and which is about uh, more than, uh, maybe about $125 or so equivalent. And um, 
and that once again, you know, that person was just so happy and appreciative of the fact that the insurance program had come to come to help him when he uh, needed the help. So, so there's there's so many stories like this. Thank you so much, Karmaji, for sharing that heartwarming story of how this uh, program is helping both communities as well as snow leopards in this landscape. So thank you, Karmaji. And, um, you know, Charu, this question is now for you. Uh, you said you started this program almost 20 years ago now, right? So over 20 years, many things must have changed. The nature of threats, you know, the program itself must have evolved. And could you tell us a little bit about how you feel this program has evolved since its inception? Ranjini, you're absolutely right that so many things have changed and they will continue to change over time. And, uh, you know, the various things, the threats, the market value of the livestock that we're talking about, etc. But I think one of the really, um, the, for me, one of the best things about programs like these are that they involve a huge amount of community empowerment. So it's not like we are running the program. We assist, we support the communities to start them and then run them, but they run it on their own. So like Karma was also saying that, you know, there's a committee of uh, from chosen from within the community that um, actually runs the program. So that empowerment is just so critical because as things have changed over time, people have themselves uh, made changes. The communities have themselves made changes to their own insurance programs. They have increased compensation value, but at the same time, to make it sustainable, they have also willingly increased the premium amounts that they contribute into the insurance fund. So these kind of, I think, I think the, the, um, the programs are dynamic. They keep changing over time. And it's, it's great because, you know, the, 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 the changes can happen very organically because the community itself is empowered to make those decisions. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful and thoughtful response, Charu. And you know, that brings us to the end of our little conversation here. And we're gonna now open it up to all the questions that have been coming in in the chat box. And yeah, so now it's time for the questions. Thank you so much, Karmaji, and thank you so much, Charu, for your wonderful responses. 